Here's a first look for me at the Bontrager Spectre Wave Cell Helmet. I ordered a size medium. With this helmet there are three different sizes, small, medium, and large, with their weights listed on the outside of the box. Here's a quick look at the outside of the box. Nothing much on the back, on the sides, and on the tops. And the bottom has some information and a size chart. As mentioned earlier in the video, there's a small, medium, and large sizes for this Bontrager Spectre helmet, but it appears that the size chart works as well for a variety of other helmets. So this part just folds on down, and the helmet can slide right on out. Also on the inside of the box is some information about the safety according to Trek. Now the 48 times injury is that they're comparing it to a traditional road helmet and not to a helmet with MIPS or the multi-directional impact protection system. There it looks like to be a manual there. I purchased this helmet for the retail price of $150. And it looks like one dollar of that is going to a good use. Now I'm going to show you a close look at the Bontrager helmet. This is a wave cell. As you can hear, it's like a hard plastic. I was thinking it might be like a soft rubber type thing, but it's not. So it's pretty hard. There is a little space underneath here. I don't think I could put my finger under, underneath. So it's butted up pretty close to it. And my only concern right now is how I would attach a light to the helmet if I want it to, to be more seen and to be more visible. And the reason I purchased this color is hopefully it could be seen a little easier than some of the darker colors so motorists or other people can see you when you're riding and you're more visible. Let's take a look at the front and let's take a look at the inside. So this padding was already installed and I noticed when I flipped it over that this part in the back was a little loose. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be loose or there's some Velcro here or where it sticks to because I don't see Velcro on this side. I think you just push, push on it. Sounds like there's Velcro on that side as well. And we can look at the retention system. This might be a proprietary Bond Trigger clasp or retention system. And it's not like a traditional one where you squeeze two ends of a buckle to release. In this version, there's an arrow to squeeze it down and slide it off. Let's take a look at this. These are magnets. And what happens with this is you just lean it over and it snaps in. And it's actually pretty tight and, I, and it won't come out this way. You have to push it down to slide it off. And again, it, the magnet, um, let's see if it comes on this way. Oh, it slides on from the top too. So you don't have to put it on this way. You could just come in from the top and move it, make sure in place. Now, if you do it wrong like this, let's say you, you don't have enough motivation to put it on properly and you just throw it on like this, it'll come right apart. So I guess it is good to note that if you do put on your clamp just to give it a little tug to make sure it's on for safety purposes. I have not yet worn this so I can't comment on whether or not your hair gets caught on this but there are a little little parts that kind of come to an area and I'm not sure if that'll pinch your hair or not. I guess I'll update the video or this video with comments below or inside the comment section of the video or just video description after I wear it if my hair gets caught and I'll let you know about that and again this shows that it's a medium 
Let's see if it has the weight it does. Let me move this out. So it says it's 341 grams. Let's see what my scale says. At first look, this is 364 grams, but that is with this tag on here. And also, I haven't removed this little information on the back. So I went ahead and removed the information, those tags, and I'll put it back in. And it's still above the listed weight of 341 grams, according to my scale. Another 16 grams above that weight. Here, as you can tell, so at 357 grams, I remove the tags. In comparison, my Bond Trigger Ballista helmet, which is only $50 more, is 291 grams. So 291, 292 versus the Bond Trigger Spectre, back up to 358. And I'll show you side by side what they look like, since I have both the helmets. Wow, look at these helmets side by side. This is the Bontrager Spectre and this is the Bontrager Ballista Mips helmet. On safety ratings, they're pretty much equal. I would have thought that the Spectre with the new design in their wave cell would be a lot more safe, but according to Virginia Tech, they're relatively about the same in terms of safety ratings. Now, is it worth it for you to spend another $50 and get the Bontrager Ballista over the Bontrager Spectre? That I don't know exactly yet, but I did get the Bontrager Ballista first because it is an aero helmet, just as high safety ratings, almost exactly the same safety ratings as the Bontrager Spectre. And it just looks real cool. I think it looks real cool as an aero helmet. And if you look at the back profile, you notice that the back kind of truncates into like an airfoil shape to help the air flow around the helmet. Another thing that I've heard about the ballista is it could get a little warmer because you only have these three vents in the front and some over the top. So if you're doing a long mountain climb, you might get a little more ventilation in the Spectre, but I'm not sure with this wave cell if it kind of disturbs the airflow, especially when you're going slow. And in comparing the two helmets, you can notice that the Bontrager Spectre on my left here has a new retention system than the Bontrager Ballista with a standard buckle. And this is majority of the helmets over the last few decades have retention systems such as this, whereas the newer Spectre has a different kind, as I showed earlier. The insides of the helmets are a little different. There's no MIPS on the left, instead there's a wave cell and on the ballista this is the MIPS system that rotates and the connections are underneath for the ballista so I have never gotten my hair caught or strands of my hair caught. But this video is on Spectre and just Picking it up, you could feel a little bit that this is also heavier. With the Bontrager Ballista helmet, I was unable to mount a light on the top. I guess you can if you use a light mount and stick Velcro on it, but I'm not sure how well that would go with a light and the straps. So this acts as a little, like a handlebar mount. And I was able to, underneath here, put the straps in. So I pushed down a little bit. This wave cell is not glued to the styrofoam. And they do this only at your own risk because I'm not sure if it is not something Bond Trigger wants you to do and it may compromise the integrity of the helmet, but it's, it's not on that tight. I just want to see if I can stick a strap underneath and indeed you can stick a strap underneath for the light, which is real good. If in case you want to use this for mountain biking or you need a light on top, or maybe if you're into videos and you want to stick a GoPro up there and you need a mount to slide underneath between the wave cell and the helmet or the outer part of the helmet. As you can see, here's a let me zoom in a little bit to show you that it is not connected. There's a little gap and this part's a little higher. I'm not sure if you can see. Let me see if I can get a little that there's just a small enough space. And this is my finger, so it's maybe like a millimeter. But if you see here and you push down, you can push down a little bit and stick the strap underneath.
So I'm going to take this off kind of in real time so you can see that when I, if you listen quite carefully, it sort of rubs. So if I push down, I could get that portion out and for this side, push it down a little bit, I could slide the strap right out. Again, only do that at your own risk. I just wanted to see if it'll fit. And I could inform all my viewers that yes, you could mount a light on top. Other Bontrager helmets have a magnetic strip in here where they have clamps or pre-built in to work with the Bontrager lighting systems. I do not have a Bontrager lighting system. And this helmet, I believe, does not have any magnetic strips up here. But I don't want to say anything without testing it. So I got a magnet here which is just a compass. I'm just gonna move it along to see if this compass kind of jumps. And it looks like because the compass is still pointing north that there are no magnets in this helmet to attach a light to as part of the Bontragner magnetic system. Okay, so the next thing we wanna talk about with this helmet is fit. So I have this tape measure here and I'm gonna go ahead and measure my head. And I think the last time I did this, I'm right at 55 centimeters. So with this Bontrager Spectre helmet, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and adjust some of the dials in the back. And side to side, it seems to be okay. And front to back, I could always click it a few times. And it seems to be pretty snug. It doesn't look like it's coming into my face or anything or that it's in the in my vision so if I'm riding and I'm looking up it looks like I could still look forward without the helmet in my way. So some people have complained about the sunglasses and that it kind of interferes the helmet so I'll take a look on the side here that when I put on the glasses it does rub up against the helmet just a little bit so you just have to be mindful of that but I think once the sunglasses are in place I'd have to go for a ride to see if it messes around with my helmet and my glasses but it seems to be from feel just about okay right now. So now I'm wearing the Bontrager Ballista helmet and it feels like there's just slightly less interference of the helmet and the glasses and I've worn this helmet for thousands of miles even with sunglasses and with my makeshift visor so these velcros are not normally here I just made a visor and stuck it on for velcro purposes to further keep the bugs out of my face. One thing I notice when I put on the helmets is this is the standard and over on the wave cell spectre it's an actual boa dial and that boa dial is just like the shoes. So it's similar to if you have boa dial shoes that this is the retention system and it looks more like a wire. So hopefully this wire is a little more sturdy because in the past I've had other helmets break apart at that area which is a little more of a fragile area of the helmet. And as you can see for the Bontrager Ballista on this side, maybe I need to turn up the brightness, hopefully you can see that that's pretty thin here and this right here is just thin plastic and if this plastic piece goes then unless you could repair it, which I don't think so, then you're going to need a new helmet. But again, after several thousand miles with the Bontrager Ballista on road miles, I haven't had any problems with it and nothing's broken yet. And now that I have my Spectre, I could use this for nighttime riding and I could put a light on top. And if I'm going up hills, slowly, hopefully there'll be a little more ventilation. So let me know in the comments what you think or if you have any questions about this Bontrager Spectre Wave Cell helmet, I'll do my best to answer them as I start wearing it and getting some miles on it. I could definitely comment on any questions you have on what my opinions are. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe by hitting that subscribe button and I always appreciate if you hit that thumbs up button for liking. And again, thanks very much for watching my Bontrager Spectre Wave Cell unboxing and first impressions.